I want to go back to advertising a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and you've had a lot of this advertising going around with the uh, so-called free light bulbs. So what is the budget for your advertising for these so-called free light bulbs? Um, that, at this point, I don't think, is that in our... It would be within the, the climate change budget. I think that is actually in the uh, climate leadership, or the climate change budget for the is it ministry. Or is that part of the... Climate climate change change under environment and parks. Yeah, under environment and parks. So there's no number that you've identified at, for that? At, at thus far, uh, when that program was announced, uh, we had a press conference. Um, and it was it was really quite something we had, or did we even have a press conference? I think we had a press conference, and we put out a press release that day. And uh, within uh, 10 or 11 days, we had something like 70,000 people signed up for it. We did no additional advertising except to put it onto the website that already okay. existed. Uh, but it was just such a tremendous... So without even advertising it, we had 70,000 households okay. uh, responding well, to you. one press conference. It was amazing. Uh, Madam Premier, what was the cost associated with changing the light bulbs uh, in your office? Um, I am not sure we'll that, have to get that back in we'll have to get back. If you, you can get it, that back to us, that would be great. And, okay. and that would actually that would be infrastructure. You know, if you could ask in the infrastructure. I, I guess I could. Thank okay. you for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, how much money is earmarked in this budget for advertising campaigns on the yet to be determined issues? Well, as we'd identified um, last year, we don't actually put those matters into our budget. PAB coordinates these things, but these are actually things that come from within the ministries. And so the ministries, each individual ministry, uh, will have money allocated in their budget for these kinds of advertising. And um, certainly we've asked PAB to be, when, the, when ministries come to them, to be careful and cautious and, and uh, you know, sort of maybe push back and say, do we really need to spend that much money on this or that? But uh, it's not in the PAB budget. It comes from within the ministry, and so you'll find those those numbers uh, in the ministry, individual ministry budgets. And it's something that sometimes comes over the course of the year. So we don't have a specific line item. And so some of the examples about of, of the kinds of things that would come from these ministries would be above and beyond the one that irritates you, which is, I understand, the climate leadership one, which has already happened. But other ones would be, um, you know, government ads respond to sudden events, recent examples are the aquatic invasive species issue, chronic wasting disease, fire bans and area closures. Government ads also okay. respond to cyclical well, events like award nominations, back to school, driver safety, highway cleanup. Driver thank you, safety. Madam Premier. Okay. All right. uh, what are you budgeting to spend on advertising changes to labor legislation? Um, again, we, we, we have no uh, specific uh, budget around that because we have uh, uh, not concluded that process at all. Okay. I would like to go over to, like, to the Executive Council on questions in that regard. What role did the Executive Council play in identifying and selecting members of the Oil Sands Advisory Group? Um, I think that there were recommendations that came forward uh, from the minister, uh, ministers of energy and environment and parks. Um, and so they brought forward recommendations and we looked at them to, to ensure that we were uh, satisfied that they represented a broad range of interests and groups that were, and stakeholders that were concerned about that issue. Um, so that's generally the way it, it went forward. And then it was ultimately, as you would know, because it was a, a product of OIC, uh, determined by the cabinet. Could you tell me then please how the uh, OSAG members were compensated? Um, it's publicly available online. It's publicly it available online. I don't think it would be anything beyond an honorarium. Schedule A. Schedule, what's the schedule? $601 per, per day. Okay, it's apparently $601 per day that they meet. And it's online. And it's online. So how much has been spent on the OSAG in total? What's the total number? Not just the $601 Department per day. Yeah, I think you'll have to ask Depar Department of Environment and Parks. They are the ones who uh, manage that it's through them. So, okay. Because they're, cause they're advising on the implementation of the emissions cap, which, it was, which is a piece of legislation that's under the authority of the Environment Minister. So how much are being spent on expenses? 
Uh, do they get, what's that? It would be um, through the environment. And parks. Again, it would be through environment and through parks, environment, and I believe okay. it would ultimately also be um, uh, available online. There's been a lot of controversy around several of the OSAG and their passionate opposition to Alberta's oil sands and the creation of pipelines. It's interesting to note that while you have forbidden your caucus and staff to campaign uh, with the, for the BC NDP, you who via, vehemently um, oppose pipelines, you have not made the same demand of the people on the advisory group. Is it fair to say that Karen Mahone who moderated a group on March 29th about how to resist pipeline tankers is being paid to advocate against pipelines and Alberta oil sands? Um, well, first of all, the people that are on the advisory committee are not employees of mine. <laughs> so that's probably the first thing that we should note. Uh, I think, uh, I, I can't remember some of the names of the uh, the. Um, uh, oil and gas representatives, but I think if I tried to tell them that what they could and couldn't do, uh, that wouldn't go very far. But the key thing that I have said uh, on a number of occasions, the Oil Science Advisory Group is constituted to do uh, uh, a very specific limited mandate, and that is to uh, come up with recommendations for how the space under the uh, the emissions cap is distributed in a fair way. They have nothing to do with promoting or not promoting pipelines. And in fact, that's what our government's been doing. And I think we've been doing a pretty good job because I know you probably haven't heard this, but we have one, not one, but two pipeline approvals. <laughs> so the point is that the uh, members of that advisory group are not... Uh, um, by this government being asked to promote pipelines. They are being asked to be part of a representative group to come up with um, a, a, a viable plan for how we get, how we distribute the remaining uh, room under the cap. Um, and so that's what they're doing. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you mentioned the focus on stimulating economic growth and building a strong future for our province. The budget speech referred to pipeline approval. Only 10 days ago on March 24th, President Trump approved the Keystone XL pipeline. Mm -hmm. This means that the pipeline has the necessary Canadian and American approvals, although some work and agreements still need to happen. And this is, uh, I'm going back to uh, the strategic context on page 73. How will your government advocate for the uh, Keystone XL and collaborate with President Trump and Trans Canada in ensuring the project moves forward mm -hmm. and Alberta jobs are created. Well, we've been working quite closely with uh, Trans Canada all along on this issue. Um, and uh, um, obviously, one of the things that's, that's critical to make sure that this continues to be a worthwhile project is ensuring that we don't get a border tax or border tariff imposed on products coming in and out of uh, Canada. So, we, you know, the whole uh, trip down to Washington was almost entirely focused on uh, making the point uh, that it would be bad for the U.S. for them to, to throw a, a, a tariff on uh, Canadian products crossing the border, including Canadian products being uh, crossing the border in pipelines. And so, um, and in fact, talking to them and reminding them how many jobs are being created in, in Texas by as a result of that, the, the uh, increased capacity. So that was what we were doing. Um, so working with them, advocating for uh, in, uh, continued open trade relationships between uh, Canada and the U.S. And then, of course, um, just in, uh, uh, we know that it's, it's good news. It looks like we could um, get about 5,000 jobs um, in Alberta during the construction phase. And I think that's good news for everybody. And, and uh, we're hoping that they can move forward as soon as we can. And we're keeping an eye on the other issues that you refer to that might ultimately still impinge. So we're in close consultations with TCPL, the Government of Canada, um, and our representative in, in Washington to see if there's any other places where we can strategically engage, engage to, um, okay. to move it along. Thank you. Yep. So on 20, March 24th, you identified that you will continue to work to get our resources to Canadian Tidewater. Mm -hmm. Will this be done with equal priority for the XL, Keystone XL pipeline? 
Well, I think the, what we have to remember is that uh, as much as it was worthwhile to be down in Washington, and it, it really was, uh, we have a little bit less influence in Washington than we do in Hesitate Ottawa. to interrupt uh, the, a lot of time for the uh, official opposition as